Hello, in this video we're going to be doing some more gradient descent and um, we're going to try to do it uh, with optimizing two variables at once. And, um, and you can see that I have almost kind of this cone-shaped uh, piece here defined by this function x squared plus y squared uh, plus x times y. And, um, and this is convex and we're going to try to find that point in the bottom, right? So we aren't going to have to worry about um, having uh, multiple minima. Okay, and so I'm going to have roughly this equation, but I'm going to be shifting it over slightly um, so that the, the minimum is not at zero, zero. I can see that, um, that when both x and y are zero, uh, this whole thing is, is smallest, right? So, so I don't want to do that. I want to kind of uh, off-center it to make it more interesting. I'm going to head over here, and um, I'm going to find this function f. And, um, and let's just think for a moment about what, uh, uh, what my parameters are going to be. And um, ultimately, I'm going to return something like this. Um, now what's going to make things easier is if I don't have multiple parameters to my function, if I can capture uh, both of these variables inside of the same tensor. And, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass in an x, y, and, um, and the x will be uh, at position 0, and the y will be at position 1. And this is just going to make it thing easier to optimize things as we go forward. And, and like I said, I also want to center this not at... Um, at zero, but somewhere else, right? So I can just kind of uh, slide everything over a bit if I like. Okay, so I have that. And, and let me just try calling this in a moment. So I'm going to say x, y equals a tensor. And the tensor is going to say, well, let's, let's start at zero, zero. And what is um, f of x, y? Uh, and um, uh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to I was saying that x is the first piece of this, and then y is the second piece of that. So let me try that again, and there I go. And I can see that, well, the x is centered at 3, and, uh, and the y is centered at 10, right? So this is kind of what I'm expecting to find for, for an answer, right? Um, but instead of just seeing that, we're going to find that same answer using gradient descent, OK? <clears throat> so let me head down here. I'm going to set this starting at 0. Uh, zero and um, and with gradient descent as usual we have some sort of loop right so for i in range of i don't know we'll start small and kind of increase that um, what do i need to do well uh, one of the things i may need to do is i need to do this uh, uh, requires gradient like so i have to do that and um, and what am i going to have to do down here well, I'm going to have to uh, actually compute uh, the third dimension, maybe a, a z value based on that x, y. Um, I'm going to have to compute the gradient of x, y, um, and z, right? So I'm going to say z dot backward. And um, maybe for now, let's just print off what that gradient is. Right? So I'm just going to say x, y dot gradient. And, um, and let's just start there. And uh, and all uh, this always catches me, right? I need my floats. So I'm just trying to, easiest way to do that is add a decimal. And um, and uh, and right now I'm not moving the x, y at all, right? It's always staying at this zero, zero. I never update it. Uh, and you can see this keeps changing because this backward call accumulates, right? So, so I'm gonna have to do something like this. I'm gonna have to say x, y dot radiant dot zero. Right, <clears throat> I'm doing the gradient descent slightly different in this video uh, than last time in that um, last time I kept creating a new tensor for each step of the gradient descent. It's going to be a little bit more efficient if I just keep updating the same uh, tensor. And so that's why I'm going to have to do this zeroing out uh, this time where I didn't have to do that in the previous video. Okay, I can see that's the gradient. And, um, and so what I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to want to update x, y based on that. So you might think I'm going to do something like um, something like this, right? And um, it doesn't like that because it kind of has this network of all these different variables. And, um, and, and here I'm kind of doing something strange, right, where x, y depends on, on, on its own gradient. And um, it kind of creates this bad cycle, right? So I can't do that kind of thing. Um, you know, I can't update a variable based on its own gradient like that when I'm keeping track of this uh, gradient history. And, um, and so the way around that is I can kind of uh, bypass the tracking and, and look at the data of that, right? So for a given tensor, I have both the actual data 
and then uh, kind of the gradient at that position, right? So I certainly can uh, do that. And, and I can see I'm kind of getting into that case that we've seen before where I'm stepping too much uh, per time and it's kind of bouncing around and, and kind of not optimizing. And so this is a great opportunity to add in a learning rate. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll just try that 0 0.1. I'm going to try that, and, and that seems to be doing a little bit uh, better. Maybe it's actually kind of converging on something, on something reasonable. Um, okay, so let, let's try to print off a few more things here just to see what's going on. Um, I actually want to see x, y as well, and then and then z, right? Z is what we're actually trying to minimize. I should keep a note of that. Make z as small as possible, right? I guess the smallest possible z is zero. We know that. Um, just by kind of looking at the function earlier. And so I'm going to do that. <clears throat> and I can see there's these different pieces here, right? So first my x, y was 0, 0. And uh, my gradient at that position was, uh, was negative 16, negative 23. Um, since my learning rate is 0 0.1, I'm multiplying this by uh, 0 0.1. And so that means I want to move over my x by negative 1.6. And uh, I want to move over my y by negative 2.3, right? And so since I'm subtracting here, well, I end up with 1.6 and 2.3 uh, as my next x, y value based on my previous gradients, right? So I can do that. And, um, and then this last piece I'm printing here, right, is the tensor itself, right? So I have that. I wonder if it's a little bit easier if I can, can I do something like this? That's maybe a little bit more clear. And so I can see that, okay, I start off with a very large z value and it shrinks and it keeps shrinking. And, and eventually, right, if I have enough iterations, that should go down to uh, pretty close to zero, right? We're kind of honing in on the optimal. And uh, where is that optimal approximately? Well, it's approximately at x equals 3.2 and y equals 9.7, which indeed ends up being very close to what we knew would be the minimum. And if I ran more iterations, we would get closer to that. Okay, so far so good. So what I'd like to do now is kind of the last step. Um, you know, we've kind of found the right x, y, uh, but I'd like to plot how it actually does the learning. And, um, and to do that, I need to uh, kind of record each of these x, y values as I go. And when I'm done, I'm going to kind of show the history of all the different x, y values uh, that we tried in a scatter plot. And, um, and so what I'll do is I'll have, a, maybe I'll call it like um, x, y history of all the different things we've tried. And um, in each pass through here, I'm just going to say x, y, history, dot, append, um, x, y. And, uh, and, and when I'm doing this, I want to make a copy of it, right? So I want to do something like this, because otherwise I keep updating that same thing, right? I keep updating the x, y, and, and I don't want to have a data frame with the same x, y values, all the, all the same, right? Um, now, this is going to be a little bit tricky. I mean, if I try this, I'm going to, it's going to complain that we don't have that. Uh, for tensors, and so I may have to convert it to NumPy first, um, which still won't work if I run that. It's saying, well, you can't convert NumPy on a variable that you're computing these gradients on, right? I'm doing these gradients, I can't do that. And, um, and the trick that they're telling me to use instead is I have to detach it, right? So detach is going to actually make a new copy of that variable where it's not tracking this history. And, um, and that's going to be solving my problem, right? So I'm just going to do this detach, and, and that actually works now. And now if I come way down here, I can actually uh, plot what this looks like. So I'm going to create um, from this x, y history, I'm going to throw all of that into a big data frame. So I'm going to say pd.data frame, just like that. And, um, and I know what those columns are, right? So I know that those were, um, uh, x and y, like so. So I can put all of that in a big data frame, just like so. I kind of start off at this, right, zero, zero, and eventually it works its way down to close to the correct answer. Uh, so maybe maybe actually looking at the last values are more interesting because that's where it's actually getting close. And, uh, and now I can actually do a plot, a uh, scatter plot of these where uh, x is my x column and y is my y column. And um, this is a history of all the values that it tried, right? It's kind of converging in here at uh, 3 and uh, 10. It's not quite done, right? It's getting pretty close. Um, 
Something that will make this a little bit more clear is if I can uh, add color to indicate um, kind of which point is a starting point and which is the ending point, right? I know that zero zero is a starting, but uh, you know it's not really showing me that in the data. So what I'm actually going to do, right? If I look at my index, um, and maybe if I look at it as a list, right? I can use these values to specify what the color is, right? And um, and so maybe at the end I'll have twenty four be black. And at the beginning, uh, well, zero will be white by the default, but then I can't see it. So I'll, I'll have to tweak it a little bit to make that gray. So I'm just trying to do this. I'm going to say the color is based on the data frame index. And, um, and, and right now, so I mean, there's still a point down here and that's white because zero maps to uh, white. Uh, but if I say V minimum equals, um, I don't know, negative 20, then negative 20 will map to white. And then zero will actually show up as a as a gray color and something around that. And now I can actually see this history here, right? I mean, this is the this is the optimal point, right? At you know three ten, and it's slowly converging in on that. And you can kind of see how there's almost um, you know, we overshot it at first, right? Uh, kind of as we're jumping past it, and then it kind of comes back in, right? But eventually we're going to converge on that that correct answer.